Hi, uh, my name is Sarah Jones Wayman. I am a second year master's student here in the Department of Geography at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. I'm actually originally from Knoxville, Tennessee, and I chose to come to the University of Tennessee not for a geography related reason. I wanted to be in the university's marching band, but it turns out that I was extremely lucky because we have one of the best geography departments in the nation, and I didn't even know that when I came here. Is this where you got your undergrad as well? So yes, I did my undergraduate degree here. I, I was just looking to take a general ed course in science. So I signed up for um, our Geography 131 course, which is the introduction into the natural environment. I took that course at the same time that I took Geography 101, which is the introductory, introduction course to human geography. And I was an undecided major at the time. I took both of those and really enjoyed learning about the material. And I just thought, this is interesting, two different parts of geography, but I enjoyed both. So maybe this is something that I would like to pursue. I ended up speaking to both of those professors. Um, it, uh, geography 131 was Dr. Henry Garcino Mir. And I had a PhD student at the time, and his name was Benjamin Schultz, for my 101 lecture. And I went to both of their office hours and just talked about what geography was, because um, I don't think I really knew. Um, but I always knew when I was younger that I enjoyed being outdoors. I enjoyed being near the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Um, and I think all those things, it kind of made sense when I ended up um, as a geography major. Those two men helped me see what else I could learn in geography. It got me excited about geography as a major and what I could possibly do for a living. And so I went ahead and became a major and had no regrets since because I enjoyed every single class I ever took as an undergraduate here. Um, for my master's, uh, Dr. Henry Garcino Mayer ended up being kind of a mentor for me even as an undergraduate. I was in his natural hazards course and he offered a position, a volunteer position, to help with one of his graduate students at the time, Monica Ruther, um, to help her collect samples for her master's thesis. And I just was so happy for an opportunity and so I took it and we went to New Mexico, collected samples and then when we returned, uh, Henry said, why not get the experience of the full project? So you did the field research, now come and do the lab research and see this project from start to finish. And so I ended up working for Monica as an undergraduate. Um, I guess I got undergraduate research experience. And I guess that was the first time I was sitting in the laboratory of tree ring sciences underneath a microscope um, examining these tree cores when I thought, wow, I'm actually doing science. <laughs> and I don't know, there, I didn't realize the possibilities whenever I had first um, signed up for that. So, uh, because of that experience, I had some confidence in myself. Maybe I could do a master's thesis. Dr. Henry Garcino Mayer pulled me aside and he talked me into it and he said, there are, there's so much you can do with your life and there's so much more you could do with a master's degree. And Previously, nobody in my family had ever even got a bachelor's degree. So I had never considered it until he pulled me aside and said that I could do it. And so the next thing I knew, I applied for uh, the master's program here at the University of Tennessee again. And I'm so glad I did, because um, there are so many people here that are willing to help you, um, no matter what field you end up pursuing. One good thing about our geography department here is that I mentioned before that, we're, there, that the professors are always trying to help the students and help each other. And so uh, I get emails, every student gets emails um, every week if there's ever a job opportunity that comes available or an internship opportunity that comes available. Um, everybody passes it along so that everybody is aware of the opportunities that they have. And this has been so great for just looking ahead at my future, for a job, um, or just different opportunities. So one time I got one of those emails. It was sent out from National Geographic to our department um, asking for interns for the year. And even though I wasn't finished with my master's studies, I thought, 
I have to take advantage of this opportunity. There was just something nagging me that just told me I really want to try out. I really want to try for this. I want to shoot for the stars. And so, even though I thought, who, who would choose someone like me? Um, I talked to professors here. I talked to Dr. Carol Hardin and Dr. Sally Horn, and again, Dr. Henry Garcino Mayer. And they instilled confidence in me that yes, I could do something like this if I wanted to, and that I had a chance. And so I applied, and sure enough, National Geographic offered me an internship in the education department. Um, That's exactly what I wanted, something like that. I'm very interested in geography awareness, um, and I'm very interested in geography education for America. So it was just the perfect fit for me. I was able to go up to Washington, D.C. for a semester. And it was so nice that everybody was willing to work with me here that when I came back, I could jump right back into my research and get back on track um, to finish my master's on time. So that's what's going on now. In addition to that, I applied for another um, summer opportunity at an international summer camp. Like I said, I'm very interested in geography education. And um, during this interview process, they wanted to know what I studied. I explained that I studied geography um, and that I, I really enjoy human environment interactions. And Children's International Summer Villages, or CISV, they said, oh, we're so glad that you're a geography student. This is right up your alley. We want you because you're going to give the kids um, that extra experience um, when they meet kids from all around the world, from countries all around the world. Um, and so I was accepted for that too. And I don't know if it was because I had a geography degree or not, but I think that that was definitely one of the reasons why they considered me. And so I just think that our, our department's always offering things like this. If you want to get involved in research, if you want to get involved in um, professional work outside the department, there's always an opportunity and everybody's willing to help you. <clears throat> what do you plan on doing with your education in the future? So I would like to continue geography education in some way. Um, however, when I think about my future, I think that there are so many things that I enjoy learning about. Um, I mentioned I enjoy human environment interactions. And so I'd like to search for work at um, some kind of environmental agency. Um, to work in a research lab or to work with outreach and education efforts in that. And I know there's probably something that I would enjoy in, with that, so I'd like to try it first. And if that doesn't work out, then I know that there's always teaching. Um, one good thing that happened to me while I was here is I was offered um, a teaching assistant, uh, teaching assistantship in which I was able to run a lab, uh, a lab course within or lab portion of our uh, course on natural environments and that was such a great um, time of discovery for me too where I learned that I love teaching I love being in front of a classroom and I love seeing the students learn and understand and enjoy what they're what they're doing and that really gave me a sense of pride and so I, I know that it, eventually I'll probably end up pursuing education but for now I just know that there are so many opportunities out there for geography students um, if you love uh, what you learn, if you love what you study, then you can find something. Uh, you can you can find something um, related to what you what you love to learn about. So, I have all confidence that I will find something. It's not clearly defined, but I know that when I apply for jobs, there will be something out there for me. Um, I'm excited about that. And what are some of your current research efforts? Okay, my current research efforts. So I currently work in the Laboratory of Treating Sciences, and I had this wonderful opportunity to go to El Malpais National Monument, which is a volcanic landscape in northwestern New Mexico. And here on this basalt, so this lava flows, now it's basalt, um, there's a forest of pygmy trees. And if you know anything about ponderosa pine forests, which kind of dominate that area. The trees will grow to be around 250 feet tall. Um, they're straight and they're majestic. And then on this, on this a lava flow in this national park, there's a forest stand of trees that are pygmy. So they only grow the same species. They only grow to be about 20 feet tall. 
and they, they have a contorted, twisted shape, very unusual um, forest. And so I went out there to just find out what is the dynamics of this forest. What's the age distribution of the different species growing there? What's the density? Why exactly are the trees growing um, in this pygmy formation when there are ponderosa pines growing right next to it, literally adjacent? in these mature 250 feet tall trees. And so we went out there and we, we found a cool discovery. 80% um, of my uh, plots that I sampled um, show visual lightning scars. And so this is the running hypothesis that I have. And I'm excited to finish this um, stand dynamics uh, project. So, but that's, that's what I get to research right now. And on top of that, I have a few side projects. Our Laboratory of Treating Sciences have been asked to date um, some historic structures on the East Coast. And so in the spring, we're going to be going to um, Yorktown, Virginia to be dating supposedly the oldest um, log structure in the nation it dates back to 1699 that is still standing. And we're going to go find out if that's true. And then we're also going to be looking at another historic structure um, next to Sycamore, Sycamore Shoals um, Battle ground. It's located in Elizabethton, Tennessee, and it's a uh, Revolutionary War site. So we're going to go look at this historic home that's located in this area too and date this structure. So it's lots of fun projects uh, in our training lab uh, in addition to um, your master's research or your PhD research. So. Sounds 